Okay, so before starting my speech, um, I need to tell you that I'm a physics nerd, and for that reason, I bet that half of you will be sleeping at the end of the speech, so okay, <laughs> bear with me, all right? So before I actually go on to my talk, I'm going to show you a funny picture. Now, you might guess what it is. That picture. It's supposed to be funny. Um, well, it's supposed to be funny because that is a cardboard box. Well, to be more exact, that is a cardboard box with something inside. Do you see something inside? Something here. Now it's pink. If you fold it open, the pink reveals itself to be a yoga mattress. And to be quite frank, that is my bed. That is the bed that I slept on during the whole month of June. Aww. Well, yes. <laughs> Well, that's just my fancy bed, and you know, there's my luggage over there, and that's supposed to be my pillow plus my blanket. And let me show you now a picture of the lunch that I had, not the lunch, the breakfast that I had for the whole month as well. Well, it seems decent enough. Well, next is going to be my dinner, which also seems to be decent enough. Now, the last two pictures that I just showed you don't really seem to be all that bad, because honestly, the friends at my dorm would probably envy me for being able to have ice cream at McDonald's regularly. But you know, that's only for a few months. Not a few months, I'm sorry, only a few days. After a few days, if you keep on having this every day, every morning, every night, well, it becomes quite sick of it. And I do not include pictures of my lunch, because, well, I never had any. Now, the real question is, why is this boy in humble? coming on stage, pointing out a cardboard box, and calling it his bed. And if you're watching this from a different country other than South Korea, no, this is not the average South Korean student's bed. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully it's not for the North as well. So, well, to make a long story short, I was conducting a physics research. Yes, that's me conducting a physics research. And you see the coffee over there. Um, I was conducting a phys physics research because I was Fortunately, lucky enough to be granted a chance, an opportunity to compete in a physics tournament held in Thailand from late June to early July. And for the physics tournament, which was a research-based tournament, well, I had to conduct four researches on physical problems. Now, the number four might not seem to be all that much, but considering the rather rigorous and the rather demanding standards of the tournament, which was international, four researches was not an easy task to finish in a short period of time. And especially since all of you, as Korean students, have a lot of rigorous schoolwork to do as well, that was definitely not an easy task to finish. Well, again, I was lucky enough to be provided an individual, an, not an individual, an independent period of time where I could actually invest all my time in the research itself for about one month before the whole tournament began. Well, lucky enough, or in some ways, unfortunate enough, now, even one month was still not enough time, frankly, because four researches, as I said again, is a huge amount of work to do. So what I had to do was, you know, lock myself in the lab and not come out until the work was completely finished, which, by the way, never happened. So, basically what happened was, I was locked up in my lab, and I did not come out because my work was never finished. And, apparently, things were just getting out of control for me. So even as, even for me, as a self-acclaimed physics nerd, well, the worst kind in my opinion, <laughs> even for a physics nerd, you knew that times were getting real hard when you could not even spare time to have lunch. And you know, just sacrificing all of those luxuries that an average high school student could be offered. Well, on the other hand, there were some simply amazing moments for me as well and researching why we spill coffee, as the host said, was one of them. And yes, that was one of my research topics. Why do humans spill coffee when we walk? Because we sometimes do, sometimes don't, but most of us do. And how can we minimize that sp coffee spilling of coffee? Well, one of the reasons why I love this problem so much was because, frankly, my love for coffee and coffee mugs is a value that I've cherished for quite a long time. And, you know, just to give you a sense of how much I love coffee, I was going to show you a picture of my dorm desk. And yes, that is just my collection of mugs that I have on my desk. And counting the ones that I have hidden in my private areas of my room, which I cannot show you, well, obviously, 
um, the size of the family becomes quite large. And trust me, that is not even 10% of the whole collection that I have. Well then again, I did not come on stage to boast about my coffee cup collection, so let's just move on to the actual physics. <laughs> so, um, what happened was, I looked at this coffee cup and tried to conduct a research, a physical research that would make sense and explain why we spilled coffee while walking. Well indeed, the phenomenon itself is really complex and to actually delve into the physics behind it, the dynamics behind it, well, the research is what required to look at aspects of biomechanics, fluid selection dynamics, yes, that is such an actual topic of study, and fluid structure interaction, or in Korean or in English, um, coffee with this interaction and its cup. And really, that grandiose research would not be presentable in 18 minutes, and it will not be researchable for a high school student in one month either. So instead, I'd like to share with you guys, well, a subtle, yet supposedly enlightening, fact about the human walking motion that might reveal the reasons why we spill coffee. And we talk about resonance first. Now, this is where this earphone comes in hand. Remember the last time that you guys pushed a friend on a swing, if you had one? A friend, I mean. <laughs> now, you might remember that there are approximately two ways to actually well, ensure that your friend will fly through the air and smash his head on the ground. Um, now, first way is really obvious. You push hard, right? I'll demonstrate that right now. Yeah, that's your friend flying through the air. <laughs> well, the second method is not that obvious. The second method is to push your friend, not exactly as hard as you can, but, you know, push him whenever he comes back to the ground, like this. that is resonance. You see that although in the first few trials, it did not seem to be as effective as it can be, as opposed to pushing it hard. But after a few pushes, you will realize that the amplitude of the swing is increasing dramatically. And the more the increase of the amplitude of the swing, the higher chances, the higher chances of your friend flying through the air. And that is what resonance is, really. If you have an oscillator that oscillates, oscillator, and you push it, if you give it force at the right time, at the right frequency, then it's going to reach its maximum amplitude. Now what does this have to do with our coffee cup? Now let's come back to our cup. Now, that is our cup, and that is our coffee inside. We can see from here that coffee actually oscillates inside the cup. So the background music is just me turning music on in the lab, so please do understand. Yes, we can see that the coffee is oscillating at some frequency and plotting a point, plotting a point, a fixed point on this video and tracking its motion, we can figure out the frequency of the motion itself, which turns out to be 3 hertz, which means 3 oscillations per second. Now, then if we push the coffee at the right frequency, which would be 3 hertz, then perhaps we would be able to ensure that the coffee would spill from the coffee cup. So that is what we want to figure out now. We have a goal. Our goal is to figure out if resonance, if resonance is actually occurring inside the cup. Well, to be honest, at first that does not seem to be correct. It seems to be bizarre. I'll tell you why. As I said before, the oscillation inside the cup is 3 hertz. Now say that our average walking width is about 1 meters. Well, plus or minus a few centimeters, but let's just say that it's about 1 meter. If a person is walking at 3 hertz with 1 meters of width, then it's going to be walking at 3 meters per second. Now, if you don't imagine how fast that is, I'll show you. It's a hard try. Now, does anyone walk here like this? I mean, if you do, maybe that's why you spill coffee. You should definitely slow down. So, no, coffee does not seem to... Oh, by the way, I did not spill coffee like, at that moment because I only had a, lot, a, a small amount of coffee inside. Um, I was going to spill it, but I just drank it, so. <laughs> but, you know, for now, let's just have a leap of faith and just analyze more. What happens inside the actual cup? Well, first of all, we, we're going to need to be, we're going to, we're going to have to talk about 
periodic motion itself. What is oscillation? And really the most exotic and the most simple example of all, of all periodic motion is a sine wave. Now everyone knows what this is, it's a sine wave. And there's a period t, there's a fixed period t, and there is going to be 1 over t, which is going to equal our frequency. And really, this is a very generic, generic example of periodic motion. But unfortunately, that is not all periodic motions. In fact, most periodic motions are not simple sine functions. They are rather more complex. However, if we look into this, you might seem to be, there seems to be some sort of sine function-ish stuff going on inside. And luckily, if I tell you that this graph, this periodic motion, is actually a sum of two sine waves of different frequency, you realize that somehow this sort of periodic motion itself is composed of various different periodic motions of different frequency. And we are luckily mathematically guaranteed that every periodic motion can be expressed as such. Every periodic motion can be divided into sub-periodic motions of different frequency. Now, of course, my language here is becoming very vague and very loose. Well, that's because I don't want to go into Fourier transformation into depth for right now. But anyways, um, we are guaranteed that any periodic motion can be divided into such different periodic motions of different frequency. And we have a tool that can actually figure what these are with a given periodic motion. And such a method is called FFT. So what I did was, now I need to drink this all first. What I did was, take out a phone. It has to be a Galaxy, not iPhone. Take out a phone, and since we have a high quality acceleration sensor inside our phone, strap the phone on a mug, and you know, just walk. And then the sensor would locate, uh, would, would uh, memorize or show us what acceleration the mug went, or the mug experienced while our walking motion. And, well, that was the result. Yes, it does not seem to be a simple sine function. In fact, it seems to be a really complex sort of oscillation going on there. But we do know that the overall frequency of this motion is approximately 1.5 hertz because people walk at that speed. People walk at that frequency. And, as I mentioned before, since this is not a pure sine wave, it's got to be composed of different sine waves of different frequency. So we take that F50 analysis and put it here. And this is our result. Now, if you were F50 analysis experts, this would immediately put you into prize tiers because this is an amazing result. There are two things we, that we can know from here. Well, the first thing is that, yes indeed, the dominant frequency, the most highest with the most um, dominant frequency inside our motion is much less than 3 hertz. It's in fact closer to 1.5 hertz. So we can verify that this result in these stays within our normal expectations. Well, the second fact is much more important. The second fact is that we witness the existence of higher frequencies contained inside our motion. And those frequencies, the second of those frequencies, turns out to be just among 3 hertz. And this is what resonates with our coffee. In conclusion, what happens is that the, since the human walking motion is not purely sinusoidal, it's not a single sine function, it contains various components of frequencies inside the motion. And lucky for us, or unlucky for us, one of those frequencies turn out to be the exact resonant frequency, the natural frequency of the coffee inside. And that is why we spill coffee, or one of the reasons why we spill coffee. And this was only one experiment result from my research. And gathering the other researches on the coffee cup problem, we can figure out, we can deduce a way to minimize coffee spilling while we walk. And I'll give away the secret. It's not really a secret, really. Um, say that we have a cup, a roll of cup, of dimension of Starbucks short size cup. We need to, well, make this into a smaller cup first. We need to make it into a test tube, which is about 1.3 centimeters diameter. Then we put in 17 pumps of corn syrup in it. And then we take some glycerol, if you know that what that is, 
and make a foam layer out of it, two centimeters would be enough. And then, when you have that, you start to roll backwards. And that way, you won't spill coffee. And this has been, ver this has been verified by my experimental results. Well, if that did not occur really ridiculous to you, let me present to you a better way of not spilling coffee. Say we have a cup, just put a lid on it. <laughs> I mean, really, all of this is ridiculous. Well, I slept on a cardboard box a bit, didn't have lunch, didn't meet my friends if I had any, and, you know, basically sacrificed a lot of the luxuries that life provided to me just to figure out ways to not spill coffee without using a lid, which in fact is one of the most amazing discoveries of humankind. Uh, there seems to be a serious loss going on over here. Or is it? Well, not exactly, because first of all, this research, uh, this research results, although it might seem very abstract and useless, is actually quite useful in other aspects of, well, of society as well. Because while most of us will tend to, will, most of us tend to spill coffee, well, some of us spill something much larger than coffee, like for say uh, a fuel tank. And this occurred, well, might have occurred honestly. This probably occurred because the fuel inside the tank resonated with the fuel tank itself, resulting in maximum interaction between the fuel tank and the fuel, which caused this truck to overturn. Now, if we had put in 17 plumps of corn syrup inside that fuel tank, maybe it wouldn't have spilled. Of course it would have, but I'm just making an analogy that it might not have. So that is one of the applications of this research. But even if it did not have any applications at all, which is unlikely, but if, even if it did not, well, as a student, as a student who goes to a Korean high school that's not, that's not, that does not teach us how not to spill coffee, well, you're still left with so much more than you started in the start. Well, to be frank, I did not sleep on that cardboard box because, well, I wanted to. I slipped on it because I knew that I had to, and because I knew that I was provided an opportunity to do so. And really, it is an amazing opportunity because you can actually have time to invest fully on what you held special in your heart, physics. And it is also a very prestigious experience because not all Korean high school students get to sleep on a cardboard box bed for a whole month. Um, yes, that was supposed to be a laughter point. <laughs> and really, I'm... <laughs> Regarding all of this, such an opportunity does not come often, but it does come to every single student that should be here right now. But the funny thing is, when it comes, it usually does not come with a luxurious latex bed. I mean, if it did, that would be wonderful, but it simply does not matter if it does or not. What matters at that point is if you are able to catch that opportunity, and if you're able to look beyond that cargo box bed and recognize its real value, and to utilize it to its fullest, that is what will make you happy as a student, as someone who is learning, as someone who is full of passion, hopefully, and someone who is providing an opportunity to do so. Well, after 18 years of observation of Korean students, um, I have to say the sad fact that not all students, if not majority of students, tend to do so. A lot of people here, or outside, are still focusing on that physical, not this physics, but physical satisfaction that society provides us. And if you didn't know, those satisfactions include um, good food, good clothing, you know, keeping in fashion, good friends, good college, good GPA, so on and so forth, and good coffee too. But really, that is not what keeps us alive, and that is not what keeps us motivated. It is the happiness beyond that satisfaction that will keep us alive and young, and you know, keep us motivated and getting things done. And as a lot of people say, you know, happiness comes in various forms. And for me, it did not come in any gold prize in any, gold, any international tournament. It came with a cargo box bed and a coffee cup. Thank you. <laughs>